Ladies and gentlemen, happy mother effing hump day. It's Wednesday. It's hump day. We're all here. We're excited. We're, we're exceptionally excited for today's pod. For some reason, I don't know why. Wow, really? The vibes are just right. <laughs> we're just flowing and we got some hot news. And okay. we're all in the same room. And we're all in the same room. Thank God. Um, so let's talk first about why we were not all in the same room. Last time, Anand, where were you how was it? Give us a recap. You were doing rich people stuff, weren't you? It was pretty luxurious. <sighs> From Pebble Beach. <laughs> this is why you can't connect with your everyday guy <laughs> yeah. and gal. Yeah. Because you're so all gallivanting. You with guys the one, pronounced one, it really one. well in the last pot. So I'll let you guys say Ibiza. Ibiza. <laughs> <laughs> so it's an island uh, in Spain. Yep. And it's phenomenal. And I would say that it has a really negative connotation because it's known as this trashy party place. Because obviously all the house DJs go and it's known for drugs and young kids, just a mess. But outside of the clubs that have David Guetta and Swedish House Mafia, the island is incredible. There's so many beach day clubs where you can go. It's family friendly. The water is incredible. Restaurants are great. So if you stay away from the nightclubs, you can have an incredible time. That's good to know because I always looked at Ibiza as a place that I might never go or have any interest in going because I just pictured literally like yeah. Swedish <laughs> house <laughs> fucking yeah. just It's like Molly. the house version of The Cabo nightclubs Wabo. are like that, so yeah. I would stay away from that. That's why I pictured it. It's like Cabo Wabo or like Senior Frogs, but a bunch of filthy rich people, and instead of pouring <laughs> shitty tequila shots, it's Molly and acid. <laughs> yes, it's like The Walking Dead with people on Molly at the clubs. Drugs are hot, though. Drugs are really hot. But still worth going. Oh, absolutely. Outside the nightclubs, the place is incredible. Great. Okay, so you had a good time. Yeah. And what, you but, know what? I forgot. Since we're billionaires. We're supposed to be in places right. like... You're right. So I apologize. <laughs> Say it. Yep. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, and my only last question is, did you listen to the pod with Michael Katz? I did. What did you think? He's great. He? He. <laughs> it's only a third of the pod. Yeah. I don't recall only him being great. It's ridiculous. I thought we did a great job. That no, it was a good pod. He was great. I'm not going to take anything away from that episode. <laughs> Maybe the episode after when Real it was just political. the two of you. Yeah, good answer. Um, D, you have also been adventuring. Not yeah. quite as luxurious. <laughs> More of the everyday man. Yeah. I'm a socialist. I saw you in trailers, sweating. I yeah. saw guys with beards. Brady, great Brady, Brady, Brady. Uh, how was it? You went to Nashville. Yeah, it was. It was interesting because I had really no expectation because I'd never really been there, so I didn't. I had heard only good things about Nashville, and it was like, oh, you're gonna love Nashville. Nashville is Las Vegas. Well, I mean, not in the sense of. Don't they call it Nash Vegas? Is that what it is? Yeah, I call it call Smashville. It's because good too. let me tell you something. Everyone is smashed. Yeah, that's just, yeah. I mean, like... Country life. You just got a guitar and a bottle of whiskey. What is that street? Uh, it's like Main Street or something. Okay, yeah. But I don't... I'm sorry, Nashvilleians. I should know that. I mean, I'd never seen anything like that in my life. It's incredible. It is. I mean, first of all, every bar, club, whatever they're called, are three, four stories. Yep. Wall-to-wall people. Unlimited bars. Like, if you want a drink, you shouldn't have to wait 30 seconds for nothing in your to way. Put nothing in yeah. your way. I'd never really seen anything like that. Like, no. just, it's, even Scottsdale has their little area. LA doesn't really have that, yep. like, a row of no. places where everyone in town hangs out. You know what it feels like? It's like how Sunset Strip used to be so iconic. Yeah. But now it's just not. Yeah. It's like that, like that street is like preserved in time. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I mean, just thousands of people, thousands upon thousands of is people. Is it like a bachelor party scene? Bachelorettes. Bachelorette. Go ahead. I, it, it, it does disproportionately <clears throat> feel like there's more women there. Yeah. They just like cow save a horse ride. I a feel cowboy, like Chicago you know? had a lot of bachelorettes. Yeah. Bachelorettes are hot in the Midwest. Where the guys, guys are go? leaving the country. They're going yeah, to Vegas. Guys, yeah. That's weird. <laughs> um, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And do the bars close at two? What's the situation? I think on Saturdays, I think it was late. I didn't stay out that late, but I think Saturdays, they seem like they go later. Um, really friendly town. 
whole shitload of white people. Yeah. Did you like feel, I? Did you I never. I was like, whoa, this is, place is white. Did you feel out of place at all? No, I didn't feel like any. I didn't feel like well, you were surrounded by white people in your crew. So maybe they just like put a barrier around you. Yeah, that's like when you go to Compton. I don't know, but like. <laughs> Bunch Even of just, gang members. You know you're safe if there's enough. Like, I did see your token handful of Indians roaming of course, around. Yeah. <laughs> They're everywhere. Yeah. I did. Uh, I saw one Asian person. Not bad. Uh, More than I would have guessed. I saw black people. But I saw a lot of white people. You know, it's yeah. funny. On that same weekend, a friend of a friend I saw on Instagram, there was like a birthday party of seven Indians. Might have been that group. Were they at a Mexican restaurant? There was a group of Indians at the Mexican restaurant oh we ate God. at. You guys just found each other? <laughs> yeah. The weird Indian I was like, I'm going to look really right now. It was literally six or seven Indians Around my shorts. age? Or our age, yeah. They didn't age well. Let's put it like that. Well, hopefully it's not his <laughs> friends then, because now they know. Because if they're like his age, they look pretty bad. Jeez, I hope it's not. <laughs> Imagine if it's them. We're going to have to cut this out. <laughs> He's going to write back and be like, yeah, dude, that was me and my old ass friends. Gosh. Uh, but um, it is a really cool, it's cool. So you liked it. I liked it. And then we got to hang out with Brady. Do these people look familiar? No, no, no. It wasn't those Indians. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, were, they looked very, they were distinctly. Yeah, these people look fairly young. Yeah, yeah. Um, then we got to meet with Brady and we went for a run. And it, you know, one of the things I was wondering when I when you meet someone four months into them running across America, I was expecting full blown weirdo. How do you know Brady? Run Club. Taylor brought him to Run Club. So he had been to like a couple times. You don't know him well. Yeah, we ran the marathon together. Oh. Like we trained together. Like oh, so he was at your after thing? Yeah. I don't remember. His that. full family was there actually. Got it. But you still expect him to be weird? I just figure four months of just like yeah. in the heat. It is, hot. by the way, Nashville is really hot. Yeah, I figured. I only go in, I go for Thanksgiving. It was humid, hot. And then, so I was curious, like, what's this guy's mental state going to be? Yeah. <laughs> but it was completely normal. He loved Nashville. He was having a great time there. I mean, because he was, the cities that he's going through are rough. Backwoods of like West Virginia and stuff like that. So he is literally not. He's running, sleeping in the camper, yes. getting out at the same spot, yeah. continuing running. And then the, his boy, who's Brady, is Brady runs America. The other guy is Nate drives America. So Nate drives. And I their mean, RV. On, I don't know if Nate deserved an Instagram page. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know what I mean? Brady's running right outside yeah. the camper. He's you trying to ride the wave. You're not the star. Yeah, he's trying to ride the wave. Come on. The camper was disgusting. Yeah. Smelled Why were you all sweaty? It, because there was sound. <laughs> First of all, it was so hot outside. They turned on the air, and it wasn't that cool. And then it was. We were doing a podcast for Detour, oh. and we turned off the air. And then all of a sudden, like Taylor's taking his shirt off in the middle of it. I'm pouring sweat. Got it, got it, got it. And I'm just their RV. The heat from the trash that it was emitting. So they don't clean up. It definitely, they were cleaning up while I, while I walked in. I'm like, you guys knew. So we're he coming. sleeps in the RV when he's resting. Yeah, got it. So when he ran with you guys, did it count towards his run? Yeah, because he ran. He was ran in the one direction. It's not like we did a loop. We just ran in one direction. Where did he start? New York, New Jersey, and in San Diego. So he's pretty far. Yeah, he's third of the way. He's and then, far, but so two thousand more ironically, miles sounds daunting. So daunting. Mike Posner is walking across America. <laughs> yeah, we they've connected. That. Yeah, and now they they talk about like, oh, we had a really rough day today. Was he's got to be pretty far America, behind. America, pr pretty but big. No, because he could be walking 20 miles a day. It just takes him the entire day. Brady's right. running 15 to 20 or whatever. Posner's getting nowhere. Posner's like stuck <laughs> in Ohio. <laughs> he took a pill in a piece. Yeah, he yeah, took yeah, a, yeah, he was, that's, yeah. He, he took he an Advil in Ohio. <laughs> that's what happens when a Ibiza goes wrong. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. That's how I picture Ibiza. Yeah. You go there, take Don't a pill. Don't take pills. And the next thing you know, you're walking across, <laughs> across America. America. You can't even you're run. Trying to find yourself. You, you can't, can't even run stick anymore. Stick to the sangria if you ever go. You <laughs> won't go wrong. Okay, so it was a success. You're I'm bullish on Nashville, though. Why? Why? <clears throat> just the amount of construction and cranes I saw. Yep. So Google has an office. Amazon's building a big office. WME's office looked like a Shangri-La in the middle of Nashville. Yeah, but I mean, think about it. That country money, if you're in yeah. country money there, because real estate's cheap, country money's big, it's like a disproportionate... Yeah, because if you're an up-and-coming artist and you see that building, you're like, of course I have to sign with them. Yeah, they're probably just, they just own... How does that whole hustle work of all those people singing at the bars? Are those guys ever making it? I'd be speculating, but I don't think so. So they're just there for life. 
Everyone looks like Sam Hunt, too. I think they're there for the love of music, and you hope you get discovered. I mean, I do think probably in that city, like, there is probably A&Rs and writers and that stuff just, walking into those places. I love the singer at Kid Rock's Honky Tonk. Let me pick that guy up. Oh, it's his yeah. bar? Kid Rock's bar? Oh, yeah. Jason Aldean had a bar. Kid Rock had a bar. This is free money if you're a big white celebrity. Yeah. You should open a bar on that street. Yeah, I agree. Like, was there, would there be a celebrity in L.A. if they had a bar we would go? Like, their name on it. Uh, the Rock. <laughs> the <Okay>. Rock's... <laughs> <laughs> well, they just opened Shaq's freaking ribs or whatever. And yeah, that, but that's that, ribs. I'm talking about a high end bar. I don't think there is one. Not a high end bar, just even a shit can bar. Well, Who I would mean, you go? But it'd have to be named in their likeness. It has to be like, you know, like Jason Aldean's. Uh, Who would you go to? I feel like not. Uh, we wouldn't go, but people would go to like a Magic Johnson bar. Okay. I was just going to say Michael Jackson, but I feel like it got kind of weird. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> child daycare. Yeah, I feel like the, the age to get in should be 32. <laughs> I feel like Kobe could have a bar. And think about how many Kobe stands there are. Yeah, he yeah. could probably have a bar. Yeah, yeah, Kobe. But I, I'm trying to think who I would go to. Clooney's. You'd go to LeBron go to, in one second. Yeah, I would go to LeBron's. I'd go to George Clooney's. Clooney, you would 100% go. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, good stuff. So you are, you've decided to pass on moving to San Diego. You're now be going straight to Nashville. I'm all in on Nashville. The country Indian. You could really take over with like being the only Indian uh, sort of mogul. Little Indian X. Little, little Indian X. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or big, big Indian X. Yeah, think about it. <laughs> um, okay. The only thing that I, the only piece of news I have is I successfully created a viral uh, challenge. I saw that. What was it? it? Was flip a, your shoes? Flip your, uh, slides. your slides. It was a bit of a marketing tactic. Yeah. Uh, but this like is my, like, I have, obviously, this isn't my invention, but for what we do, I think there's a huge opportunity in fun moments that are fun to watch anyway, just because they're fun. It's a challenge that people can get involved with, and at the yeah. end of the day, it ties back to product. So we just got a bunch of new slides on, on our web store, so we came up with a uh, game in the office to see who could flip the slide and catch it back on their foot. Gave people a hundred bucks and I challenged the, uh, the, the the fans to do it. But some the, of those look like camera tricks. Might have been. I don't know, but I'm not here to. I saw fake. one that was just too smooth. Was it Jason's? That was Jason. That looked a little shit. Sh it looked shady. Yeah. I don't know. But he didn't win. So, <laughs> so it was only I the first you 10. just posted it. It was the first 10. Uh, and it, it literally, the only thing that blew my mind that I wish I would have corrected for is the number 10 were done in 45 minutes yeah. it was so quick yeah so anyway um i'm surprised it even took that long i guess it's hard to film it and you have to nail it yeah but it went a lot of people posted it um, even still today everyone's posting it so it was a success as a social yeah. media uh marketer that it was interesting because i saw that happen i was like oh <clears> i want to <throat> see the reaction what i'd love to circle back on a week from now if those slides have hit the top seller agreed and we should recap that on the pod okay yeah. um okay News ready? Mm hmm News ready. Let's start off with this. I don't know if any of you listeners out there suffer with anxiety, maybe a fear of just impending doom. But if you do, I have a bit of a trigger warning here for you. <laughs> we all almost died yes. recently. Five days ago. Five days ago, and we had no idea that it even happened. This is the type of thing that you hear could happen and it actually did, or almost did. There was an asteroid that came within 45,000 miles yeah. of Earth, mm -hmm. which is less than 20% of the distance between here and the moon. I mean, Brady's running like like two, two years, right? Three. Well, Brady Brady's running 10% of that. <laughs> so if Brady did this for 10 years, he'd catch <laughs> he the asteroid. He'd catch that damn asteroid. <laughs> this thing is so close, uh, and they didn't even... They didn't even catch it until like a few days before yeah. it was already here. So we would have been smoked. Yeah. Nothing we could have done. Yeah. Luckily, it passed, you know, 45,000 miles away, which is nothing. And whatever. We carry on about our silly little lives and, and do podcasts and live another day to make fun of Donald Trump. This is nuts. I mean, imagine if you just, like, all of a sudden you're like, wow, London is gone. Yeah. It just evaporated. And they said that the size of this asteroid was 427 feet wide. Um, it was traveling at 54,000 miles per hour. And it would, 
easily wipe out a major city in a, Yeah, in they the describe it, it's like the equivalent of a nuclear weapon just launching into a city. What's yeah. kind of scary, I know scale is way bigger, a six mile wide rock is what eliminated the dinosaurs 66 million years ago. Yeah. Six miles is long, but is it that long? No, it's not, Anand. <laughs> We would have lost an entire I mean, I ran five, six miles a day. <laughs> okay, here's the question. You have to pick where that asteroid lands. Where is it? Where, where, what city? Where does it hit? Antarctica. Okay. I'm, I'd rather just let the ice caps just be gone. Honestly. The water problem. Accelerate slow, uh, global warming. Slow, slow death, but no, but no one injured. Yeah. On it? Tron, why don't you go first? <laughs> I think I'd choose Russia. <laughs> that's what I was avoiding because <laughs> like listen I'm sorry man uh, listeners I'm sorry Russians don't hack us but like you know they're on us yeah. and we can't cause real war like, so imagine if that just if, happened you could just slowly like doo -doo -doo, like and, NASA could just direct the yeah like oops <laughs> natural disaster oh god mm. I probably shouldn't have said that. <laughs> I made a funny Russia comment on ridiculousness one time and I still get hate mail from it really? yeah that they rigged our election. Oh, yeah. Because it's on MTV. So people oh, are like, uh, you idiot. You don't even know. Russianness. Wait, Trump so the MAGA guys saying hate mail or, or Russians, Russians are sending him? No, mail? it's actually more MAGA's because I said that they rigged our election. Uh, so they're like, he didn't rig our election. Trump won fair and square. Anyway, uh, just a lesson that I didn't learn in uh, not <laughs> talking shit on public platforms. <laughs> Anna, you going to bow Arctic, out? Arctic, yeah, let's get rid of the ice caps. You guys are too peaceful. <laughs> this is ridiculous. This isn't how you get rated. <laughs> um, okay, so whatever. We almost died. I mean, what are you going to do? Like, they have this technology where you can, you know, fly a spacecraft near it and steer it off course. You can do all these different things, but they take years <clears throat> of knowing that it's coming. And this is less than a week that they have. It's like... They're supposed to be monitoring things of this size, so I'm curious to see... Like, well, how come this Hopefully thing? a six-miler doesn't get by them. If a six-miler gets by them, we're toast. We're toast. If you watch it, there, it gave me so much anxiety. There's a, like a gif of the rotation of the asteroid. You guys watch that? Yeah, I've seen it. Of the rotation of the asteroid and the rotation of us and our little solar, solar system. It's literally like you see the two. You see us coming in hot and the asteroid coming. You're like, oh, shit. And then like they're like so close to each other. That's crazy. Yeah. So anyway. Okay. Well... Let me just say this. If there's ever a reason for complete Armageddon and the world to just explode, this might be part of it. Yeah. A six-year-old YouTuber just bought an $8 million property. <laughs> In Korea. So if that's not a good reason to blow this whole thing up, I don't know what is. This seems like the Korean, like Ryan. Yeah. We talked about Ryan and his toy openings. Um, this girl is a six-year-old uh, Korean girl that opens toys um, one of her biggest videos, she opens a, a pack of noodles, cooks it on a fake toy kitchen, and eats it. It's crazy. Real high-level stuff. Boram. No, enthusiastic slurps well, them down on camera. I don't like those words. For yeah, a six-year-old, yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't want to talk <laughs> about <agree>. enthusiastically <laughs> slurping anything on this podcast. <laughs> um, I mean, here it is. This is the world we live in. Yeah, it, I, it's crazy because... Once a week, we're talking about something from the YouTube world. Yep. Uh, last week, we talked about uh, Logan Paul. Um, we also, the week before, talked about how farmers are printing money on YouTube. Mm -hmm. And now, I mean, you for, I think we forget YouTube is the biggest media platform in the world. Yep. So, like, there's going to be so many more stars that come from that world. Oh, yeah. And young Boram here... At six years old, buying an eight million dollar house means she's making like twenty, thirty million dollars. Yeah, a easily. Year. <laughs> it's not. I just fear the parental pressure that what she's getting to keep it up. Because what if that revenue starts declining? Does she just start getting grounded? <laughs> she might not even know she's not grounded. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. She definitely doesn't know she made it. Six. That kind she of money. No yeah, shit. no six-year-old has a concept of buying an $8 million Zero. property. But here's the funny story. Can you imagine all of the little, like, Joe Jacksons that are out there trying to create yeah, the next yeah. Ryan? And I need 16 videos from you today. Go, go, vlog. Have you vlogged yet, Terry? It's the Timmy? equivalent of Tiger's dad, right? Yes. Who was trying to make him the greatest golfer, and now it's like the greatest YouTuber. So think You'll about make way fact. more money being the YouTuber. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> well, you guys talked about the Fortnite. They compared the winner of Fortnite Made three million. Tiger won three million at the Masters, yeah. and Djokovic won like a, 
somewhere Less. around. Yeah. Less. And the 16 year old Booga, Booga yeah. or whatever his name is. Is that his name? Booga, the one Fortnite? Oh, I, I don't yeah. know how to pronounce it. Yeah. That's not his name? I don't know. Maybe it's a team. Anyways, that kid won $3 million also. And the interesting thing about, since we're just talking about it, the Fortnite winner was not from a. Like, no. you expect the Lakers. The Lakers are the FaZe Clan, yeah. right? Like, or all these other teams like that we've heard. You know, I've heard of some other teams come around. But, like, you expect, like, I was reading before, these are the people we think who are going to win. Yeah. None of those people won. Some random 16-year-old kid win, which is going to – it's so interesting because he, since it is a sport, it is probably the only sport now in the world, unlike maybe golf can have this type of thing, where a completely unknown person can be the world champion. Uh, definitely. Because in football, baseball, basketball, we know who's going to be the final. I think, I think that we're confusing in esports team is equals cool, not skill. Right, FaZe might be the coolest gamers, but doesn't mean they're the best. I think it does, though. They they have they came guy because came in third place. It doesn't mean every great gamer is into Supreme, because that's what makes FaZe and they're cool. Hundred Thieves, they're cool. But but the still is. But forget that. But all of those big teams, the FaZe clans, the NRGs, the Hundred Thieves, all these big teams, right? They all had guys that placed, but the winner was. Completely random because as soon as they announced the winner, I went to his Instagram. He was not popping. His team wasn't really popping. Yeah, well, these, while everyone else was worried about the next Supreme drop, this kid's just grinding in the basement. Yeah, but that's the thing, right? This is why I think is a couple things. Number one, the whole sport is so who the hell knows right now. Yeah. So like we're basketball, and you have to go through these formal sort of. There's a process. The other thing is, it's like having the best gym in the world in your shitty little basement. You yeah. don't need anything. Yeah. So there could be some kid that's not sponsored by anything that's actually better than all these guys. Just yeah. with good internet connection. Yeah, you don't go through like a college, like, oh, okay, we see the through the ranks. Yeah. This kid just has strong Wi-Fi and a dream, man. <laughs> <laughs> He's just going for it. But I also think it's like, because it feels like, like World Series of Poker. I don't really know anything about it, but I feel like a random person could win that. They Absolutely. do sometimes, but it's kind of similar. Sometimes they do, but it's, always the top ranked guys are in there got it so in this case the top ranked teams yep. they all had guys that place it's very similar i think but it's going to be a this similar 16 thing. year old kid who like just came out of nowhere yeah and it sounds like if you're over 21 you're washed you're washed yeah how old is like phase banks and those guys they're in their 20s yeah but he's like the og because there was yeah. a kid who was 24 who i think won 1.8 million and they were calling him grandpa really 24, your but grandpa. There's like a 13, what 14. Is, D? <laughs> he is literally like, he, great, 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 great he grandpa. could tell us about that six mile wide <laughs> asteroid that killed the dinosaurs because he yeah, survived it. Back in my day, <laughs> yeah. the dinosaurs got eliminated. <laughs> oh man. Well, anyway, listen, I, I just am curious what's going on in, because like before to have the next Michael Jackson or Tiger Woods, once again, like this. You could tell pretty early if your kid just wasn't going to make it. Yeah. Now, how many parents are like running their kids' lives hoping that they can make them the next YouTuber or gamer or, you know what I'm saying? There has to be so much of that happening. Oh, it's pretty absolutely. cool. There's it made like, me want to have a kid. When I saw this little $8 million Korean girl, I was like, you know what? I think it's time, time, time to invest in <laughs> Invest in a couple kids. New babies. <laughs> Start training those thumbs early. Eat that ramen. <laughs> Eat that ramen. Be silly. You're not silly. No one cares. Okay. Um, next up, I want to dive real quick into fake meat land. Yep. Beyond uh, did their earnings call. I'm a little confused. I didn't pay super close attention. They showed uh, big sales gains. Yeah. But it looked like shares dropped. So they're massive sales growth. Okay. Uh, larger than expected losses. But the real issue is they plan to sell an additional three and a quarter million shares with um, three million coming from existing shareholders and 250,000 coming from the share. So this is a great way for Beyond to raise a bunch of money. And then clearly, mainly, a bunch of existing shareholders want to sell huge lots of stock. Which so is kind of concerning. Like, can you give me a little bit of a like for dummies version of what that means? So they, they want to sell three million additional yeah. shares. Shares. Yeah. So so, so it's like six hundred million dollars. Call it. But ballpark. it's not going. Only two hundred thousand of the shares, I think, are two hundred 
250,000 of the shares are the company selling it, so they could be using that money for investments. The other, the, all the bulk of the shares are existing. Investors are saying, get us out. Yeah, so 250,000 huh. of 3 million shares yep. is primary capital, meaning it goes to the business. So, they so can 90% use that. is going to shareholders who are like, man, this stock's at 200 bucks. <laughs> Let's get, get me out. out. Damn. <laughs> so that's where it's scary when, because, the you know, Retail Joe is going to get stuck with a lot of patties. Yeah, and it's <laughs> Kleiner now, Perkins man. and another early investor are selling. Yeah, um, are the bulk or ninety percent of that three million shares? And because it's such a huge lot, you got to announce. Yeah, it. and do you know the other uh, thing that was really fishy is I don't know if this happens that often, but it's typically a six month lockup. Yeah, and the banks just re- said, okay, we'll only do a three month lockup. Yeah, that's why it it's insane. How is that? Because I, mean, I think I mean, that, that, I need a securities lawyer to tell us. Like, how, I'm, oh, I've always been under the impression when a company goes public, there's a six month lockup for pre existing shareholders through the IPO. Not when it goes up a thousand percent. When it goes up 10x, what if IPO, like probably 25, 30 bucks, something yeah, like that? It's like 10x. It goes up 10x, and then all of a sudden, let's take that six down to three and get that out. Everyone's out. Who rigged that, man? Somebody rigged that. Somebody's yeah, like, hey, isn't there that one uh, loophole? Yeah, there's some loophole that they got. Gosh. So I, the stock kind of went down today, not much, like 20 bucks, but... 10%. It just seems like if you're like Retail Joe in on this thing big... Retail every, Joe probably doubled down after the stock doubled. Like, oh, I could finally get it at a discount. Gosh, yeah. but I don't see what more of a red flag there really is than this. <laughs> this is a huge... They should put a flag on Robin Hood next to it, and it should be red. Not Robin Hood. <laughs> Beyond me. No, no I said on the, on the Robin, app. Robin, Hood. They, yeah. Robin Hood should put flags on stocks. God. Be like, hey, dummy. <laughs> well, that'd be Stop like, buying this stock right now. Trading for dummy. <laughs> <laughs> Inside of trading for dummy. I mean, it's still... A, it's an $11 billion company, and what was revenue? $270 million or yeah. something? Yeah. It's re- that they're projecting? It's got a long way to go. Okay. Well, listen, I, that, that makes me sad. Uh, you want to know who else is not buying it? Yeah. Is Chipotle. Yeah. So Chipotle's CEO said um, no beyond for him. Yeah. Not coming. Uh, one of their priorities is, you can maybe tell me the exact sentence, but whatever, amazing food, whatever it is. What, what do he say? What's He's one pretty, of their values that it doesn't fit? So he says, uh, we have spoken to those folks and unfortunately it wouldn't fit in our food with integrity principles That's it. because of the processing. Uh, and interesting enough, so this has been a big discussion in our group chat uh, with the H-Word guys because I, I went to one of their venues recently and they didn't have Beyond and another one they didn't have Impossible. And they did have it before. They did have it before. Yeah. And it's it's apparently, uh, and I'm hearing this in a lot of restaurants, that a lot of chefs are pushing back on it, saying it is actually unhealthy and it is processed. So the, when you look at the nutritional issues with uh, Patty, one, it has like insane amount of sodium, just yeah. like an asinine I amount. don't think so. No, yeah. I've looked at both of them. The sodium is not low, but it's not... By but any means, like compared a cup to of a ramen. burger, they're saying comparing it to a ham- hamburger. I think it's. I, I think the the issue is not the what you read on the back of the label. It's the ingredients is what people get concerned about. Yeah, I mean, I think well, because the back of the label looks pretty. It's like when you look at the back of the label of a Beyond or Impossible, you're like, this isn't great for you, but it's not bad for you. Yeah. That's how I look at it. Yeah. Well, here here's the thing. So th- someone posted it Beyond Meat burger versus a Costco Kirk. Kirkland brand real burger, which is probably the number one selling burger <laughs> in sure. America. Yeah. So like uh, calories, uh, they're both 320, 330. Fat, they're in the same set, 23 grams. So uh, cholesterol beyond has zero. Um, but in sodium, they have 521 milligrams and uh, a, the Costco has 100 milligrams. So that's one big thing. The other is there's a bunch of words in there that no one knows how to pronounce. So that means... They are some sort of processing thing that is done because it is faux meat. So I think there seems to be a general, in, in certain kind of chefs and restaurants, there seems to be like an anti-Beyond Impossible because I think of the process of that food. Yep. So here's what I really think is going to happen. I think this is the first phase. It's going to go mass market and it's going to get people comfortable with the idea of not eating meat. 
eventually there just needs to be a cleaner version because I don't know how easy that is to scale, but I think there will be, until there's a pure clean version, it's not going to be everywhere. So two separate issues. If you have the creative chef that's like, I don't want to deal with these processed burgers, fine. I can, I can live with that. Okay. I cannot live with Chipotle saying it's too processed. In my life, yeah. I've had stomach poisoning twice. Well, there's yeah, the one from a Thai restaurant, one from Chipotle. Yeah, I, when they say their food with integrity principle, <laughs> yeah. like, I've had a lot of chicken. They that blew that with that statement because they're, they're the ones with the salmonella. Yes, yeah, like seven times. And e yeah, e coli, e coli, e e e yeah. And even just when you have there, I mean, like I literally get burritos there now without meat, and I love. I'd much rather have meat because there's so, a lot of chicken. So my yeah, other issue is with chefs really at restaurants that you don't go to. This is not a, a diss. You don't go to an H -ed restaurant because you're like dying for a healthy meal. You're going for an experience. You're going for very good food, and yeah. you're going for like just the ambiance and good food. Yeah. There's but a lot of unhealthy food on all these restaurants that are claiming now, oh, it's too processed. Like, what about plate of fries and cheese on them? Yeah. I just think that when something's new, it's going to always it's much get more back. vulnerable to that. Right, so if like it's brand new and everyone's like, all right, let's try it, let's try it, and then they're like, well, wait a minute, have you seen this? I feel like everyone's like, oh, wait a minute, did yeah. we just do this too quick? Yeah. So it's gonna have to just survive that, and they're gonna have to explain what the hell all these random ass ingredients are, and yeah. why is there so much freaking salt in this thing? Yeah. And then it will be fine, but that is some real challenges. I mean, if Chipotle saying it Beyond doesn't have enough yeah, integrity I mean, for you, that's but quite. I a, think that's Chipotle. Like, fuck, Del Taco got ahead of it. I get it. Everyone else got ahead of it, and we have we were behind, so. They're not going to get the uptick because the restaurants that got the uptick were the early adopters. But I still think that's wrong. I still think it's so early. If Chipotle said, we now offer Beyond, absolutely people would go in there for it. Yeah. I mean, so if that's their early. calculation, that's wrong, I think. I think the Chipotle management has been completely outmatched the last five years by yeah. all their competitors, and this yeah. is just another way of them displaying it. I mean, who's eating Chipotle? Uh, the PG guys, <laughs> both the guys at the desk over there. I mean, if I was going to eat Mexican food like that, I go Taco Bell. Doesn't all Danny day. complain about stomach issues? It's probably why he yeah, eats too much Chipotle. Just inhaling Chipotle, <laughs> <laughs> and okay. that's me. That the Beyond Impossible. You're getting that stuff no. cake just from <laughs> no. Okay, next up, another company that seems to be in a little bit of a struggle, at least in the United States, is Under Armour. Mm -hmm. um, it seems like what is this because. Nike and Adidas are kind of battling that, battling it out. They're both doing well. Um, Under Armour's kind of caught in that, or what's happening? It's it. I would say for them, their North American <laughs> business is really bad. They they continue to have declining sales in America, um, which is shocking because this is their home base. And what's even more shocking, when I was walking around Nashville, everyone was wearing Under Armour. I bet they were t-shirts, shorts, and shoes. Like sneakers. I never see anyone wearing Under Armour sneakers. So this is really interesting because there's obviously a lot of fans of Under Armour. Their most recent quarter, their sales in North America declined 3%, despite all the positive things happening in that entire market. Yeah. You know, Nike and Adidas and Lululemon are on absolute fire and tears. And so when you see a business like this, is it, it clearly is that the brand is not resonating. And the one thing I don't understand is their product is freaking shit. Ex that's obviously... Like, how do you have Steph Curry, yeah. all Cam these Newton, people... They have everyone. They have all these top athletes. All their shoes are horrible. Their product, you've never seen an Under Armour, like, pair of... Even, like, running yeah. leggings, anything, and been like, oh, what are those? Yeah. Like, why, hire someone. Yeah. I'm so confused. I, I don't get it either. I mean, if you're... Because you're in uh, Baltimore, is that where they're based? In yeah, Maryland? Baltimore. Um, maybe you need to relocate to New York or uh, Portland where all the talent is yeah. for that industry. Or relocate. They have so much money. Yeah. And it's so I don't, weird. I don't get it. I mean, their number one selling shoe of the top 25 shoes was the Rock shoe for men. Oh, yeah, they have the Rock too? Yeah. The yeah. Rock's crushed. They the have the Rock, like Steph Curry, headphones. everyone, and they, and they have MAGA. Yeah. Yes. Well, that's, <laughs> How can you lose? Well that, well, that just shows you MAGA's, this is why Nike keeps doubling down. MAGA's buying power for this segment is irrelevant. Yeah. It clearly, because Nike is just saying, we don't want your business. And they're Good like, Under and they're doing the research and being, yeah, who cares? Look yeah, at all that. these idiots that are saying Colin Kaepernick, that whole thing was stupid. At least go support your guy. 
Yeah. You're not doing shit. Yeah. You're going to buy Nikes <laughs> yeah. just from a discount. Yeah, exactly. And so I, from if you look at this from a brand marketing standpoint, it you don't need to you can alienate an entire customer base and nothing happens to your business. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we're good. They deserve it. Yeah. I just don't see how you're that blind. How do you have Steph Curry and all these people, but how do you have Steph Curry and literally, they, didn't they do an ASAP Rocky collab? Yeah. And you have all the, of this shit and you, your shoes get roasted all day by the market that it's for and you don't adjust? Yeah, I yeah. don't know. I mean, at I, this I, point, everyone knows they have a product issue. How can... It's, it's insane because I'm, <clears throat> I hate the Warriors, but I'm smart enough to recognize Steph Curry's one of the more unique athletes we've ever had. He's relatable to, he's not that big. He's a, he's gem a small for guy. Marketing. He's a family man. He's very articulate. He's incredible at the sport he plays. He revolutionized the sport and they can't figure out how to sell product around him. Even New Balance. I just saw a video New Balance did. We, just, we roasted them like a month ago. They put out a video with uh, Kawhi and all these different people, which they have all these number one athletes and it yeah. looked really sick. Yeah. yeah. Their product's better. Yeah, they're probably. I actually mean, even like their the product. billboard they did with uh, Kawhi, King of the North, yeah. playing on the Game of Thrones. Yeah. Okay. Well, guess what? Under Armour, you suck. Yeah. <laughs> uh, last thing on earnings talk is I would say my favorite brand to ever exist. Wow. Sorry to bother you. Apple. Okay. Um, looks like they crushed it on earnings and uh, stock popped because mm -hmm. of it. Yeah, big time. Um, the only interesting thing, and I'll let you guys take it away, is the declining sales of iPhones, I think, is really interesting. Declining sales. It's the first time in a very long time, um, I think it was like seven, eight years, that it's less than 50% of total revenue. So they were able to exceed revenue, exceed profits, exceed all expectations, and their number one product went down. That is unbelievable. That yeah. means... Their service business is uh, starting to take steam. The more interesting part of their business is their wearables business apparently is on fire and non-iPhone business. Like so is wearables just... It's the Apple Watch. Yeah. The watch. Yeah. So that means this watch has... Like, I, what about iPods or AirPods? Yes. It said, so they said uh, 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 AirPods, um, Beats headphones, and, uh, and the watch are on fire. That's unbelievable. Yeah. That's, it makes, I mean, it, they must be selling billions of AirPods. Well, they said the, the thing, right? Yeah. They've pretty much plateaued in the number of people in developed markets that are going to purchase iPhones. Yeah. Like if you're, if you're of a person who has the money to buy an iPhone and you haven't yet, you're just not going to. Yeah. So right. they've gotten everyone. So they have to figure out how to sell that person different stuff, which yeah. they clearly have figured out. Yeah. yeah. Which is I incredible. If, I wonder if we've just reached the end of smartphone Brands. innovation for a while. Because there's just no way you can compete with that. Because Apple. anything all these people are doing, like even uh, Casey Adams was here the other day and he had a Huawei and he showed me like, oh, this shit can zoom like 20. Like it's literally, we're sitting in our office on the 11th floor and you can like see clearly a person's face yeah. on the sidewalk across the street. Of course a Chinese phone I've does seen that. The, exactly. There's, a Twitter, there's <laughs> a Twitter video of someone from the like 50th floor of a building yeah. zooming in it's on It's insane and really stop. creepy. The point is you'll never use it unless yeah. you're a creep. Yeah. I just feel like all of these innovations, quote unquote, are like not applicable. Yeah. I just wonder if maybe the next... Like 10 years, this is what phones look like. I Maybe think at five. the high end, you're probably right. And the other phone manufacturers aren't focused on converting the iPhone user to, I mean, they might be, but it's, a, it's like a waste of time. Yeah. Everyone's trying to figure out how to sell the next billion smartphones. Yeah. So that's to, to all the poorer countries. Yeah. And that's figuring out clever ways of people that need data, but not Da enough data and internet to be able to play music and watch mm -hmm. like shows, but they're probably not going to purchase other things because they are in a rural village and they don't make a lot of money. So there's a lot of companies trying to figure out that, that segment. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, listen, I bet they'll figure it out. I just wonder what Steve would have done. I'm not wondering. <laughs> I'm really curious. We miss you, Steve. Okay. Next <laughs> up, I want to talk about a true true American hero, and I would say probably the pop culture Princess Diana of our time. Wow, what an intro. 
Little Nas X. <laughs> and the proof is in the number. So listen, you can be mad at me for saying that. You can disagree with me. Unfortunately, as the old saying goes, women lie, men lie, but numbers don't. Wow. Little Nas X has just broke the record for the longest standing most weeks ever at number one on the Billboard charts. Unbelievable. I'll tell you what, man. I don't know the link off the top of my head. I guarantee if you, if you search it, you'll find it. There is a video. Gosh, it's like Rolling Stone or someone did it. And it's how the song was made. And it is incredible. Because really? it's literally like the dude made it on his phone. Um, the dude meaning Lil Nas X? Uh, no, Day the Trip producer. or whatever. Uh, yeah. to, whatever whoever produced it. Um, Lil Nas X heard it like on SoundCloud or whatever. He just recorded to it before the guy knew. There's DMs of them back and forth saying, hey, I'm going to post the song now. Post it. It was just so like a kid in his room that just made a song and now it's the biggest thing ever. Yeah, it's, it's crazy because everything he's doing is like just good. Even the way he's handling social media, I think he's like doing it better than anyone else that's young and relevant in his audience. Yes. Like he had a post the other day that was so funny. I hope it's the same one I saw. It's the one where he Wait, goes so it's a year ago. Year a year ago, yeah. I was yeah, sleeping was so on my good. sister's couch. Read it. Read it word for word. I, I'm I'm trying to find okay, it. Okay, why are you looking it. at it? I have it. Okay. Go ahead. Wow, man. Last year I was sleeping on my sister's floor. Had no money. Struggling to get plays on my music. Suffering from daily headaches. Wow. Now I'm gay. <laughs> So is he Im implying he wasn't gay a year ago and he became he just gay? Knows just how to use the internet. <laughs> yeah. He's he like, got, now I'm a gay rock star. He's so rich. He's like, you know what? I'm gonna be gay. Okay, so here's the Gosh. thing. I think it's clear he's mastered social media. Yeah. He's mastered all his imaging. But do you think he's not capitalizing on monetizing it while he's this hot? Mm -hmm. Meaning. There should be commercials around him. There They're all be, coming. They're all coming. Don't worry. They're but coming. Like, it's like I DJ feel like Khaled. if Scooter had him, this guy would have a Pepsi. He'd be on a Pepsi commercial. Probably he'd be, true. He's and, get on a But Colgate. probably true, but that's coming. It's all coming. Yeah. You You're going to see coming. him NFL opening weekend. You're a black gay cowboy that's been number one for a record amount of time. You are money right now. Yeah. So you think the Thursday night opener is Lil Nas X? Uh, Billy opening. Nice. He's going to be doing Monday Night Football. The, well, no, the, the song. The Thursday. I know. Yeah, yeah, you can do the Monday Night. Okay. Like, he's about to cash in for the next two years years straight yeah. off of this song because you know corporate america it's like how dj khaled was like hot then cooled off and then he's like hosting the nickelodeon awards and pepsi commercials like they, yeah. it takes them forever no matter who you are yeah. right this kid is gonna print money yeah. here's the other interesting thing did you know i don't know the actual business of it but i'm guessing he had to give up quite a bit of publishing old town road is a uses a heavy sample from nine inch nails oh wow that's like almost the song it's the whole guitar part oh man and it's a random song called 34 ghosts 5 it looks like um that like it's not a song that anyone ever cared about it's just like a random song filler on their album so they're gonna make so much money so i'm telling you because they recorded it and put it up before they even knew how to get clearance i'm sure nine inch nails said yeah but we want your publishing yeah yeah i think nine inch nails and trent reznor they're printing this this cash. song i don't i've heard how much hit songs have made like 5 million, 10 million. Like I've met people that have said, oh, this song made this much money. Since this is probably the biggest song ever now, what is this, like a $25 million song? You would think so. Just the song part? Yeah. For how and, many and think about how many times it's going to license over time. Oh, yeah. I mean, we haven't seen these and, movies. Yeah. And but uh, he hasn't done any major interviews, has he? I might have just not watched them. Because I don't think he's like press. I think he's... I think he does stuff. I just am not quite. Yeah, we're not buying He's not on Kimmel. It's also like the That's summer true. and it's off season. Yeah. So I'm sure in September, Saturday Night Live. Yeah, why is he not on like Ellen and stuff? Are we wrong? Maybe, yeah, maybe yeah. he's done it. Who knows? It might we're, be. There's no way he was on those shows and we haven't seen a clip. But maybe we're just not watching. Are you watching Ellen every day? Yeah, have you been watching Ellen? No, it would if, if, have to go knows, viral for yeah, us to see it. Not even viral. It has to just. He'd have to say something like, last year I was sleeping on my floor, now I'm gay. Yeah. You don't think he would? Ah, oh, if he did. He also said something about next next person that makes fun of me for being gay, I'm kissing or something. Yeah. yeah. Next dude. Did you see the Tyler the Creator Funkmaster Fex uh, no. freestyle? Is All it right, good? We'll, well, yeah, we'll watch it and talk about it on the next pod. Okay. Because I want everyone to watch it okay. before we talk about it. Okay. Well, anyway, listen. I just think that when it comes to 
everything that's going on with Trump and all of those feelings that are happening in America, a gay black cowboy rock star is what we need that knows how to use the internet well is exactly what we need. So who's bringing on stage first? Because he's going to be asked by politicians just the way like Kid Rock goes oh, for Trump yeah, he, stuff. He turned down Buttigieg. He did? Yeah. Okay. Wow. He's not about that politics. He should just go bullshit. Trump. Oh, my God. Imagine. <laughs> be I think he should go on Oh, my gosh. He would be the biggest. Little Nas X. <laughs> he is seeing Trump just patting him on the shoulder. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Hey, you little gay buddy of mine. <laughs> hey, you gay cowboy. <laughs> oh, man. He is amazing. It's just the perfect thing that, like, is a perfectly produced. Like, I remember when Trump got elected, I used to say to people, you know what could be cool is we could get really good art out of this time period because a lot of frustration will anger a lot of artists and you'll get really instead we got Lil Nas X but it's perfect it's literally perfect for... it's the exact opposite of that yeah. complete meaningless song with no impact on society yeah. that's uniting the country yeah. okay uh, next up you guys have been traveling a lot lately just wondering if you have any interest in heading over to Baltimore uh, it doesn't sound like it okay on it any interest in Baltimore not really. Okay. I've not had pleasant experiences there. I've been there quite enough. The well, Under Armour headquarters? Yeah. Under Armour headquarters. Apparently, good old Donnie Trump would describe it as a disgusting rat and rodent infected mess. <laughs> Huge rodents. <laughs> What's going on? This guy's beefing with his... I mean, it's just like, I don't... I've never heard of... I mean, I say this every time we talk about Trump, but like a guy that will just shit talk <laughs> someone... It's his own country. It's yeah. your country, dude. Yeah. But he doesn't give a shit because this guy, what was it? The Democratic uh, representative from Baltimore. Elijah Cummings. Um, was was being, scrutinizing his border treatment. Mm -hmm. And he lashed back because he said that it's way worse in Baltimore. Well, yeah, and it's a more black dangerous. Community. And yeah. it's a black community. It's a black congressperson. And then w what happens is the internet does its thing, which is... Some African American Republican lady takes video walking through Baltimore throwing trash. I mean, it could be any street. You couldn't. I couldn't tell. Mm -hmm. Every, media picks up on it. It goes viral on Twitter, and they're like, "Oh, you're right, Donald Trump." There, this is a shithole. So this is part, in my opinion, of his entire 2020 political strategy, because the way he wins 2020 is to bring out white uneducated voters isn't that how he won 26 no but even more got it right like so he has to he has to continue to bring them he has to bring them out in a bigger percentage mm -hmm. for him to maintain yeah. his electoral uh what, what he did in the last electoral college so i think this stuff plays well and yeah, i think it does yeah I think so i think it it's pretty calculated yeah and everyone there was reports from people inside the uh, White House saying like, yeah, the way he does it, we know it's insane, but don't be fooled. He knows what he's doing. Yeah. Well, it wouldn't do, if he just. Yeah, winning. Yeah. yeah. It, here's the thing is if he doesn't say it like that, no one cares. Yeah. If he just said, yeah, Baltimore is not a pleasant place to live, and I wouldn't you, recommend and you know what going it does? there. <laughs> and you know what it does? It makes, it dominates the news cycle for the next week. Yeah. And it distracts everyone and makes liberal people to go even more woke. Yeah. And then just talk about him being a racist as opposed to like, wait, there's no jobs in these states that he promised. Yeah. <laughs> Gosh, man. He just does. Yeah. It's. And then he makes uh, right people say like, yeah, everyone just thinks we're all racist. We're not all racist. Yeah. Like, you know. Yeah. It, it's, he just talks and everyone talks about him. Yeah. yeah. So it's just Trump, Trump, Trump. And literally no Democrat is making any waves. And except then. Except for. Uh, what's her name? Elizabeth Warren. Or well, yeah, Omar but I haven't even heard shit about her. I almost wish Elon Omar. The liberal like media the, just said, "Okay, yeah, he said this. We're moving on." Yeah. Let. What, do we really need to spend seven days like, "Oh, Trump's a racist." Da, da, and, da, da, and da. if you watch Lauda's voice, you understand like someone like Roger Ailes how manipulative he was, and that's what it is. It's about if if liberal media wants to help. The liberal candidates, they need to change their tone on the news. Of course. It's, I can't because, believe they're this dumb, though. Because you know, and there's been so many uh, topics about it, that 
that's their coverage of him obsessively is what helped him win the election. Yeah. Why are you doing the same thing? Yeah. You, you they take the it. bait. Ugh. They take the bait. Rodent, rat infested. Oh, I can't believe he said that. That's going to be on the debates tonight, which will air uh, uh, Tuesday night uh, in Detroit, which has a very similar issues, Flint, to like places like yeah, West yeah, Baltimore. Have, all they're going to do is talk about what Trump said. And, and it's going to get hijacked because it could have actually been about helping those and people. And then they're going to spend, I mean, we're airing this before the debate, but how much of the debate's going to be about impeaching Trump? Yeah. Like, get over it. Uh, yeah. Just go run and beat him. It's yeah. so stupid. I just don't understand how you literally spend three years doing the same strategy that doesn't work. And now you're going to soar right into 2020 and, oh no, nobody even knows any of the Democrats' names. Do they yeah. realize, like, yeah, this guy is an insane person, but he's making you catch the bait every time. Yeah. Oh, and let me let it. me shit on Baltimore. Watch these liberals go crazy. <laughs> crazy. Not, and all of a sudden, that. you're defending a city that West Baltimore, which is not going to win win you the election. Unfortunately, no, of course not at yeah. all. And all of his people love it. Yeah. Yeah. Because they're like, keep our country safe. Worry about your because own shit. Because the, yeah. the MAGA guy could be like, oh, crime's high in Baltimore. Yeah. Maybe it is rodent and rat think that anyway. <laughs> All yeah. I was seeing today is the, uh, the conservatives tweeting out how many deaths there have been since the tweet, how many robberies, and how many all the crime that's been since Donald Trump's tweet. So further proving... But it's yours to fix. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, you don't talk about it like it's Haiti. Yeah. <laughs> like it's yours. Yeah. And, and but it worked, and now Republicans yeah. are like, yeah, it, it is a, bad. Yeah. I mean, I hate to say it, it's a win for Trump. Yeah, it yeah, it is. Okay, well, listen. Once again, I'll say it before and I'll say it again. Great content for our podcast. Yeah. yeah. So no shortage of that. Um, next up, also in shock and despair land, it's hack. It, apparently it's hacking season. Yep. So I, I mentioned Robin Hood uh, that I got an alert that they got hacked. Was it Equifax? Yep. Yeah. Uh, got hacked. Everyone got 100 bucks. Now, Capital One got all their shit stolen. What's in your wallet? Somebody else's hand. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like what? That like it's, it's just hacking season. Hundred million people's data from Capital One. First of all, I didn't know hundred million people <laughs> even had Capital it's One. Good marketing. Cards. I was looking. I went through my credit cards when this happened because I don't know. I don't pay attention to who's the issuer. Yeah. So I'm like, do I have a Capital One card? And I was like, no. I mean, those commercials are so stupid. It makes me not want to sign up. You for have a Capital card. One card. Do I? No, I'm just saying. No. <laughs> you don't see. <laughs> you might. Somebody might have just got a, an account hacked. But but the crazier story is it's a former uh, Amazon employee who was a software engineer at Amazon Web Services that hacked it. Yes, one person. Yes, to show how vulnerable we are. Yeah. So one girl who used to work at freaking Amazon. Yes. Can, What's this? Like, do, do people get away with this? They must, huh? You must I'm, be able to hack in, siphon off some funds, close up before anyone knew. Um, you have to. And here's the thing is, well, in this case, this, this person bragged about it on like Slack and Reddit. Jesus. <laughs> okay, never mind. Maybe she's an idiot. She's going to jail. <laughs> Gosh. What's the punishment for that? I mean, it's got to be big. I, it's going to be big. It's going to be like 25 years. But, in prison well, here's a bigger question. Why isn't there more security that one employee yeah. can hack 100 million yeah. customers? And is it Amazon's fault? It was an Amazon employee. I mean, it said former. Amazon no, daughter. It was a former employee that knew how, what the yeah. weakness was. Yeah. But she knew the weakness because she worked at Amazon. Yeah. So does, who takes the blame here? You might have to Because when them. you're Capital One... And you use Amazon Web Services, aren't you offloading that part of your business? Like, we trust Amazon Web Services? Yeah, something fishy here. Get if you have out. a Capital One, there will definitely be a settlement for this one. So it's just going to take five years. Another reason, always have two-factor authentication on anything. Well, if you because wait five if years, you'll get 100 bucks. Yeah. <laughs> I think it'll be 175 with inflation. Nice. <laughs> well, yeah, a okay. couple hundred million dollars fine. Max. Yeah. Max. Okay. Next up, uh, I would say this is probably, D, I'm going to speak for you and say this is who you would describe as a modern-day Mother Teresa. I would. Or Princess Diana. 
Not Princess Diana. Isn't that what I said? I said you said Princess Diana. Yeah, I yeah. would never. I just okay. call him a hero. Mother Teresa. D's specifically D's hero. Okay. Yeah. LeBron James. Mm-hmm. Um, sure, he he is a hero. Um, I have a special sweet spot for him. We're from the same place. Grew up very close to each other. He does great, great things. But the other day, he was acting like a real dick, and it's, I'm upset. I and disagree. So, and so are a lot of other people. So, I want to talk about this with you guys. Yeah. He was at, there was all these videos of him at his son's uh, basketball game. Where his kids are just like dunking on everybody, yeah. which is kind of strange. To There's do. a seven-footer on the team. No, yeah, he's <laughs> a, team's like a, it's a super team for 12. He must be so pissed. Years. When you show up on the other team, you must be like, all right, oh, God. Okay, here we go. I'm going to get posterized <laughs> yeah. on the House of Highlights. Get a picture. I get an autograph. 17. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. So this guy shows up to his kid's game, and there's just all these videos that come out, and par- excuse me if, I, if they weren't all the same day, but he's cheering, he's out on the court, he's running, giving a chest bump to his son, he's also in the warm-up dunking. See, there's that- the fake news, I'm already catching you. What's the fake news? Was he, that a different game? He chest bumped to another kid on the team, so but he just what's that matter? He still got he's on, on the court. Shoulder bumping. Okay, I'll get to my... I'll let you okay. go. Yeah. So, back to what I was saying. He's out on the middle of the court, chest bumping kids. He's dunking in the warm-up. Everyone's <laughs> cheering, yeah. doing his own little NBA dunk contest. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's just like, bro, you're the biggest star, potentially, in all of sports. Yeah. Sit the F down. Yeah. And watch your freaking son play basketball. You don't got to get the attention here. Why are you dunking? So, I'll give you mine, because then Anand can go. Yeah. Mine is... I, as someone that played organized sports all throughout childhood, parents are very are the biggest problem in organized children's sports, in my opinion. Yep. I think, and the fact that it is LeBron, and he is who he is, and his kid is the best player in the country on top of it, I do think that, like, it's not a big deal that he's doing it, but it's just more of, like, if your kid was, like, the not so good kid, and he did a great play. Then I understand, but like, he, it's Bronny. He's the chosen. He's the chosen one's son. You know, he's like we know he's going. Adam's already staring at me. And so, so my, my 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 argument is just like, I agree. It's okay to tone it down a little. Yeah. I'm also on the other side. Be like, it's it's dope that the biggest star in the world is so happy for his kid, and it gets excited. Do that but, shit at home. So that's so, that's so the dilemma. Here's a few things. For him to show such great interest in his kids' games, showing up to the tournaments. But he made it about him. No. You ha- know what I'm saying? When you're doing dunks at a damn warm-up, you said, hold on a second, this is still the LeBron show. You're happy yeah. for your kid, or, or are you trying to show off? Maybe they asked him to do it, the team. Doubt Maybe the it. kids and asked. If you, and if they do, you say, no, 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 this is about my son today. Yeah. So uh, the, the one that went viral the most was one guy on, the, on, on his Bronny's team was on a fast break, Jumped up in the air, threw the ball under his legs. Yeah, Another player dunked it. Yeah. Neither one was Bronny. Yeah. And LeBron got so excited, he jumped up. His shoe ran on the court. Yeah. And then he had to grab the shoe, ran back, and then chest bumped the other kid. Yeah. So he's doing it for, like, think about from those kids' perspective. They're not Bronny. Their dad's not LeBron. And you have LeBron pumping you up. Who knows what their family backgrounds are? I can't, I have no idea. But, like... That's hey, like really empowering. What about, if you were talking about seeing it from the kid's perspective, I agree. What about the other team? The opposing team, poor kid, who got dunked the on. The LeBron's like, yeah, fucking children <laughs> yeah. won. You're like, <laughs> that kid's quitting down. basketball. Get and then your here's fucking a, shoe here, off the court here, and fuck off, LeBron. <laughs> here's, like, oh. here's my other take, okay. which is going to be a little insensitive. Okay. Yeah. LeBron has made basketball relevant for the last 15 years. Yeah. If he, he can show up at any basketball court in the world and do whatever the hell he wants because basketball is only big because of him for the last 15 years. I, I'm a LeBron <laughs> fan. I agree with you. I just think, unfortunately, the, the biggest issue is it distracts away. It, it obviously brings a lot of attention to the kids also yeah. playing the game. But I get it. Like if, you, if he's on your team, it's the best thing ever. I feel yeah. like the other team but is probably guy, like, man, that's sick. LeBron is doing tons. But yeah, what, I, were. what I respect so much in a person is like if, you are, if you've made basketball more relevant than ever and you're sitting there and paying sort of respect to these kids playing and giving everyone handshakes and saying, yo, you guys killed it, even the other team. That's like so sick. I'm sure it's like he's you're doing the biggest, that. They I, probably no, no, no. just don't do those picks I'm saying viral. If you're just doing that. Yeah. 
Like, it's like, holy shit, Him this guy respects the game. Is enough. Like, he doesn't. He you got know, a dunk. You're dunking in the pregame? <laughs> I love that. What the fuck are you doing? And we have Taco Tuesday today. Yeah. Taco <laughs> Tuesday. <laughs> it's just like, bro, you got to chill. I, you can't. You don't got to make a high school a basketball of, game about you. There were a lot you. of takes I saw that. LeBron didn't grow up with a father, and he played all this AU, and he's just What are you, Michael this. Jackson? You didn't have a childhood, and now you're just going and you never, never land? Well, he's doing Sh- sit down and shut up. <laughs> shut up and <laughs> play dribble. Shut, shut, shut up and don't, don't dribble. dribble. Just shut, shut up. up. Just shut up. <laughs> also, I will say, I think even though he probably loves it now, I would say. He'll regret it? No, it's not good for Bronny either. Would, Having your super, if you're a basketball player. Yeah. Having your superstar dad get everyone all wowed because he's dunking. You'd be like, Dad, can you please just sit down and let me dunk a few times? Yeah. Imagine that. Imagine being yeah. a kid and your fucking <laughs> attention-hungry dad is out there windmilling at your warm-up. So LeBron's a new LeVar. <laughs> yeah. This, this, seemed, this seemed, I don't want to say out of character for LeBron because I don't know LeBron's character. It seemed like a lapse in judgment. It seems like he's so good at like, he knows when to do what. Yeah. That, I know he's excited. It seemed bad. I don't like it. You know the other thing? So Bronny's 14. Mm-hmm. and That's insane. <laughs> and he's like the biggest star in the world. <laughs> so nothing, when he becomes, he's going to be in the NBA. Like that's yeah. a foregone conclusion. Nothing's going to be new. Right? He has Drake following him. He has every celebrity following him. He posted that Stranger Things video. Millie with, you know, what about me and the next Stranger Things? So like when he's 19, and he's a rookie in the NBA. He's already been flying private his entire life. Yeah. He's met every one of his celebrities that he probably looks up to. Yeah. Nothing is new. That's why he could be an incredible athlete because he's not going to be shy. He's going to be like, go to the clubs. He's like, I did, I think I did the lot at 14. What yeah. do I need to do? <laughs> or the opposite. Yeah. Or you're always searching for that thing that could be yours. Yeah, I just think it's interesting because he's... I'm not going to say robbed of it because he, he lives an incredible life. Taco like, Tuesday looks pretty family friendly and fun. Taco Tuesday looks amazing. <laughs> but when, you know, the other kids that are, don't have dads that are in yeah. the NBA that go to the NBA, like, they're probably like, holy shit, I'm flying private now. Yeah, I'm, and you wonder. I, Drake's at my game. Drake's probably been at all of Bronny's yeah. games. Yeah. <laughs> it's all how you deal with it, right? Because that kid could end up more hungry or that kid could get caught up in the lights because right. he's never had it. LeBron could always be searching for something that's his, or Bronny could always be searching for something that's his own, or he could, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's all about how they deal with it, but I just think one thing that isn't helping is your dad doing windmill 360 dunks at your (laughs) I loved it. I love all LeBron content. (laughs) I love all things LeBron. I just want to be clear, but just... Guess we're not getting the uninterrupted podcast. (laughs) (laughs) LeBron, I love you, man. Listen, I have nothing against you. I just wish, you know, let Bronny shine. Okay. (laughs) Okay, last but not least, maybe some trouble in Uberland. They just laid off 400 employees. Um, I don't know. I mean, we all know they like to burn money. Apparently, they're trying to burn slightly less. Uh, what's going on? Does this, does this mean trouble? Is this anything to worry about? What what's interesting, think? it's 400 marketing people. So... But what do marketing people at Uber do, do you think? What do you think those people's job was? uh, Here's my take on marketing for Uber. Uber, the ride-sharing service where we demand a ride, does not need any marketing. Uber recruiting drivers needs a shit ton of marketing. So that's where, if I was the marketing team of Uber, I'd be focusing all my effort on recruiting drivers. Uber Eats still needs a lot of marketing still, but they're integrating it better into the app. Like I keep getting shoved to Uber Eats logos in the app now. So it's making me more comfortable with the concept of ordering it versus Postmates. But we don't need, they don't, no one needs to tell us at this point. This shit went viral. It's, it worked. <laughs> That's yeah. fair. Yeah. It's now it's just who's cheaper for the most part. Yeah. Or who's, honestly, I'll give you from my perspective, it's time. Whoever is quickest. Yeah, that's fair. So, like, I was at the airport. I got 26 minutes for Uber. 26 minutes. I'm like, airport? you want me to walk home? Yeah, I've got that before. And then I did Lyft, which was 12 minutes. So I ordered Lyft. And it was probably 16. There's no way it came in 12 at LAX. No, he was already in the airport. He was just circling. It took 12 minutes. I, the Uber driver that took me to LAX last week said he called the Uber X drivers roaches. <laughs> <laughs> they're just... They're just 
just choreography. Yeah. Think about how bad that is for pre-existing, already terrible LAX traffic. Yeah. That there's roaches just circling. circling. <laughs> you know, like how many Honda Civics are in there just doing laps? I mean, yeah. getting to LAX is between the construction and the roaches. Yeah. It's impossible <laughs> yeah. to get to your it's so bad. I think what they should do is, I mean, so real quickly on the Uber thing, I mean, it's probably smart. Cut costs. Focus on whatever is making money. I mean, 400 people for that big of a company is not that much. Yeah, I think, so earnings are next week. So That's what companies do this to be like, hey, we're actually... Co- cost we're, cutting. We're not burning $3 billion this yeah. year. It's two point nine nine nine. Yeah. I mean, what is that? It's, it's like $4 million in salary. It's like, it's nothing. Yeah. Um, okay. Just wondered if we should be worried. I think that what LAX I, should do is for the younger folks, there's 2,000 scooters. Yeah. Okay. You can scoot out to Sepulveda and get your own thing in front of In-N-Out. I'd prefer that. Maybe In-N-Out is more organized. In-N-Out should partner with the scooter company yeah. Yeah. and LAX. I'd grab a burger, wait for my Uber. Exactly. Yeah. And then get it on Sepulveda. Can Don't you imagine bring the trash scooters around LAX? <laughs> oh, my gosh. Like a war zone. Yeah. <laughs> gosh. Okay. Okay. All right, guys. Well, that's all we got for you. I hope everyone uh, is having a great week. Mm-hmm. Uh, we'll see you on Friday. Yep. Got some more hot content coming your way. And if you like the show, if you like what we're doing, we only ask one single favor, and that is to let everyone that you know know about it. Post it on social media. Call your mom and dad. Tell them you love them. They should check out group chat. Call that uncle who's a little weird and shows up drunk to family events. Let him know you should check it out. It could change his life. I would love that if the drunk uncle. We got a message that I would like to read for real, maybe on a later episode, but it was really uh, meaningful to to me because this person said, you guys have genuinely, I'm not a dumb person, but you guys have genuinely helped me have better conversations with, what did that guy say? We were with all his in the group boss. chat. With his boss. Yep. And he worked in, do you remember? Finance? His, his uh, like boss was a, a day trader yeah. trading stocks. That was it. And, can we uh, confirm you're not dumb? How do we know that? Well, we can't. <laughs> but... <laughs> You know, I, I don't think this show is for dumb people. I think if you make it through consecutive group chat episodes, you're not dumb. And you've gotten two episodes smarter. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, that meant a lot to me. Guys, thank you. Tell everyone about it. Have a great week. See you on Friday. Ciao, ciao. Guys, if you like that and you want to see more like it, as well as vlogs, other web series, and all the random stuff that I'm doing here on YouTube, don't forget to click that subscribe button. You won't regret it. I promise.